Hello everybody, I'm Adrian Lister from the Natural History Museum in London and I'm going to talk to you today about the importance of Darwin's fossil collecting at Punta Alta. Now the Beagle voyage uh, lasted for five years from 1831 to 1836. It was a voyage around the whole world, but three years of the time was spent around the coasts of South America. And if you ask most people what they know about the Beagle voyage, they will usually mention the Galapagos Islands. Uh, but the Galapagos actually was just a short stopover of two or three weeks uh, in 1835, towards the end of the voyage. Uh, before that, Darwin had already spent three years making many important observations in South America. And I believe that the fossils that he found at Punta Alta and elsewhere were at least as important in the development of his ideas about evolution as the birds and tortoises and so on that he later saw in the Galapagos. On the 22nd of September, 1832, the Beagle was anchored off the coast of Bahia Blanca and the captain Fitzroy and Darwin went ashore in a small boat and landed on the beach at what is now Punta Alta. And at the back of the beach, Darwin found a low cliff. You can see his sketch of the geology of the cliff there. And very quickly in the cliff sediments, he started to find fossil bones. Richard Darwin Keynes, who is Darwin's descendant and biographer, described this as a red letter day for biology. And what that means in English metaphor is that this was a very important day uh, in the history of biology, because it was the first of Darwin's lines of evidence that led to his theory of evolution, as I will explain. And Darwin returned to Punta Alta several times later in 1832 and the following year in 1833, whenever the ship was in the vicinity, he went back to collect more fossils. And here are some of the fossil bones that he found. This is an almost complete skeleton of the giant ground sloth, Scalidotherium, found by Darwin on the beach at Punta Alta um, after it had fallen out of the cliff uh, after a heavy storm. And in total, Darwin found seven different species of large mammal at Punta Alta. And almost all of them, as you can see from the stars, were either completely unknown to science at the time, or they had been found before, that, but they were unnamed. The only one that was previously known was Megatherium. All of the rest were new to science. And similarly, uh, along the coast at Monte Hermoso, Darwin found several completely new species of small mammal, um, so that Darwin's work here uh, really added greatly to the knowledge at the time of the Ice Age fauna of the region. But his discoveries had an importance beyond that uh, because they provided, I believe, early clues to his ideas about evolution. So here, for example, on the left is the lower jaw of another species of giant sloth that Darwin discovered, Mylodon darwini, it was later named after him. And above it, you can see the jaw of a modern sloth, uh, very much smaller, but Darwin recognized that in its anatomy, it, for example, those peg-like teeth, the fossil he had found was very similar to that of a modern sloth. And he recognized their possible relationship to each other. And the important point here was that sloths, of course, today are a South American group. And here he is in South America, finding fossils that appear to be similar to the living forms. It was the same with the glyptodon. At Punta Alta, Darwin found a large piece of the shell of a glyptodon, like the piece shown at top left there. And he had seen armadillos uh, running around in the flesh. At top right, you can see a, a pichu uh, actually collected by Darwin himself in the region of Bahia Blanca. And so it wasn't very difficult for him to make the connection uh, to say that this shell of, that I found uh, looks very similar to that of the modern armadillo, but very much bigger. It's clearly an extinct form related to the modern armadillo, but different. He said, I'll never forget my astonishment 
when I dug out a gigantic piece of armour like that of the armadillos. And this similarity of the extinct to the living, which we saw both in the sloths and now in the glyptodons, um, led Darwin to an idea which he called the law of succession of types. And he meant by that, that in any particular part of the world, the species that you find as fossils appear to be similar to the species that you find living. Now, this doesn't necessarily imply evolution. It could be uh, that the creator had simply created successively different but similar forms in each part of the world. In Darwin's mind, however, he came to think of this as evidence for an actual genealogical uh, connection. In other words, the living species are actually descended from either the fossil species he had found or something related to them. When Darwin got back from the Beagle voyage, he very quickly started to write up all his thoughts about evolution in his notebooks. And he drew this now very famous diagram, which is the first drawing really ever of an evolutionary tree. And he said in his biography, in July, that was just a year after he got back, 1837, opened first notebook on transmutation of species. That was the word that was then used for what we now call evolution. I had been much struck on the character of South American fossils. And if you look at the notes that Darwin wrote on the adjacent pages to the famous tree, he's talking about the fossil mammals. Now, he didn't put those pictures on the tree. I've put them there, but I believe from his writings that it was actually the fossil mammals that were in his mind when he drew the tree, because he wrote next to the tree. Now, according to my view, in South America, the parent of armadillos might be brother to Megatherium. In other words, he was suggesting that the living and extinct sloths and armadillos were all connected to each other in an evolutionary sense. And this was triggered, initially at least, by the finds that he had made early in the voyage at Punta Alta. It was another 20 years before Darwin published all these ideas in The Origin of Species in 1859. But in the very first line of that book, he drew attention again to those fossil finds. He wrote, when on board HMS Beagle as naturalist, I was much struck with certain facts in the distribution of the inhabitants of South America and in the geological relations of the present to the past inhabitants of that continent. Distribution of inhabitants, he means what he saw in the living fauna and flora, but in the geological relations of the present to the past inhabitants, he's referring to that connection he made between the fossils and the living species. I just want to finally conclude by looking at some other fossils than the mammals. Uh, here are some fossil invertebrates that Darwin found in the same deposits at Punta Alta, where he found the bones. At the top, you can see uh, some shells. Uh, at the bottom, there's a piece of coral. And these also had significance for Darwin because he identified these uh, shells as the same species that were alive today. Although these were found together with the fossil bones in the fossil deposits, they were species that he said, I can find the same species uh, on the modern beach. And that, that was important to him because the prevailing theory at the time was called catastrophism, which suggested that periodically through Earth's history, there were points in time where everything went extinct at the same time, all life went extinct, and it was then replaced by a new wave of creation. But here Darwin is finding mammal species, fossils that clearly had gone extinct, these giant sloths and glyptodons were no longer with us, but they were associated with shells that are still around today. So not everything went extinct at the same time. It was a blow to the catastrophist idea. He also pointed out that the deposits at Punta Alta and elsewhere didn't look like they'd been laid down in some great catastrophe where everything was all mixed up in turmoil. They were uh, horizontal beds of sand and clay, which looked like they'd just been laid down, as he put it, by the action of tides quietly or by a river, just as you can see happening today. 
Um, and this again was a blow to catastrophism because it suggested that these things happened, geological events happen gradually and accumulated over long periods of time. And these ideas, of course, go together perfectly with his ideas about evolution, that the earth and the animals and plants that live on it do change through time, but they do so in a gradual and cumulative process. So thank you very much indeed, and um, happy Darwin Day. <laughs>